Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 440, the Down Under edition. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old, and it is currently 9 o'clock in the morning on Friday, the 28th of September 2018, here in sunny Parramatta, Australia. Yes, it's another show from the future. Ooh, yeah, I'm. A, it's Thursday where I am. It's Friday where you are, and uh, you know maybe this Twilight Zone stuff really helps us because we're going to talk about another Twilight Zone type episode of Unscripted. Oh, First, let's let's go back in time. Uh, for yeah. those who have been paying attention in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s and 80s, every time the uh, the House of Bishops or the uh, General Convention of the Episcopal Church said, no, we're not going to go there. Somebody always went there anyway, uh, whether yeah. it be uh, uh, female clergy, women bishops, the Philadelphia 11, you go on and on and on, uh, on to Gene Robinson. We, we're going to get there anyway. Well, that's not just something that happens here in America. You are ha experiencing that more and more often down down under. And I thought you could bring us up to uh, to speed on what happened recently, uh, almost two weeks ago now, right? Yes. So, um, well, it's going on for more than two weeks now. What we've had here in Australia is last year, if your viewers will remember, the parliament legislated for, for the change in marriage. Mm -hmm. And so now um, gay and lesbian couples can get married, but they can only have what we call a, a secular, a civil, a civil wedding. So uh, of course can't, that race they can't do it in church. Well, not in the Anglican church. There are some churches, if the church body decides to do it, then that's fine. But churches have the right not to do it. And so the Anglican church, of course, has its official position on marriage. Uh, it's the orthodox, conservative, traditional position. It's the biblical position uh, that marriage is between a man and a woman. But that doesn't stop people trying to push things through. And so despite the fact that the bishops met earlier this year and agreed that, that nobody should move forward on this issue without doing it uh, through the proper mechanisms of the uh, Anglican Church of Australia, which is to say either the General Synod or perhaps putting a question to the Appellate Tribunal. Despite that, in a number of dioceses now, uh, we're getting very, very similar motions uh, being put up at, at the uh, synods, which and it's synod, it's synod season now in, in Australia, and, and the latest place for it to happen now is is uh, the diocese of Melbourne, following on shortly from the diocese of, of of Brisbane. Now the motions are very clever. The motions do not ask for a liturgy for marriage within the church. What they're asking for is a liturgy for a blessing alongside a um a same sex marriage. That is to say, the ability to to go into a a civil wedding and provide a blessing uh, that's that's uh, in partnership with that with that marriage. So they would have the ceremony, you know, with a judge at a court, and then run across the street to the church and have a uh, a blessing, so to speak. Yeah, or a civil uh, civil celebrant. So we have civil celebrants here who okay. uh, are licensed to, to practice marriage. Uh, and yeah, so perhaps at that actual event, uh, like, you know, con uh, immediately after it, or yes, uh, perhaps go and do a very uh, a formulaic um, uh, wedding and then come and have a, a, a blessing. Not, of course, a marriage, because that would be wrong and, and against the rules, but, but but have a blessing. Very much perhaps uh, what we saw in the um, in, in the in the same-sex wedding that, that David Old.net reported on earlier this year in, in Melbourne, where um, Anglican ministers came and clearly were participating in a in a wedding ceremony of, of a gay couple, uh, although somebody else was actually the celebrant at, at that wedding. So in a sense, they'd be legalizing, uh, uh, making it right what what happened there. Okay, so tell me a little bit about the liturgy now. Uh, oh, have we moved on to the Brisbane thing? No, no, we're not there yet. <laughs> No, we haven't seen anything yet. We haven't seen any it's, liturgies yet. It's seven o'clock here. I'm not fully functional. Pe <laughs> That's but okay. I'm not fully everybody. functional at 8 a.m., so people are kind of used to this. We haven't seen any suggested liturgies yet. Okay. Uh, look, honestly, by now, you and I you and I know where this would go. We'd be seeing Na Ruth and Naomi. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd be seeing David and Jonathan. You know, your love is greater than a woman. We'd be seeing anything other than the text that Jesus says defines marriage, uh, Genesis 2. This, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and wife, um, father and mother, and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So you know where it will go. You know the kind of language that will be used. There is nothing new under the sun. Well, uh, no, the, there the, is. The, I, I heard this term, and you know, help me out here. Yep. The erotic Christ. 
Oh, That's, wow, I've never wow. I've never heard that term before. Have I not been paying attention? It's not certainly you, in the in the nineteen uh, well, century books we have over here. Well, you're you're in the you're in the Episcopal Church, so I'd have thought you'd have heard it before I did. <laughs> no, the erotic Christ is a, is a is from a set of prayers that was used at uh, Brisbane Cathedral uh, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. They there is an annual uh, gay pride event in Brisbane um, up up north in Queensland uh, here, uh, and it's the gay, gay Pride Week, all the usual sort of stuff. And um, the cathedral, in its great effort to be welcoming and inclusive of everybody, uh, had a, a Pride Even Song. Now, Even Song at Brisbane Cathedral gets about, I'm told, gets about 35 to 40 people. Uh, so we get far more than that here, even sure. in our, our, our meeting service. Um, but that's what they get. They're a city centre CBD cathedral. That's who they get. And the usual sort of city centre um, people that attend, uh, they put on this this great pride, you know, to make everybody feel welcome and and, and inclusive. Uh, they had a straight 1662 evening uh, evening prayer. There's a um, a sermon from the Dean Peter Cat, which uh, again I've published on uh, davidall.net. I think Anglican Inc has it as well. Uh, if you can make head or tail of it, please uh, um, edify your your watches to what's going on in that sermon. It, it really is. I, mean, I don't mean any disrespect to Peter Cat. It's just not no, a great reason. It, it, it has but, gone places we've only dreamed of going with the liturgy. Yes, yeah, yes, yes. The so the Trinity, the whole notion of Trinity de defies all our binaries, all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Anyway, erotic Christ. So at the intercessions, not printed in the, in the order of service, but at the intercessions was a set of what's called rainbow prayers to the rainbow Christ. Um, this multifaceted uh, uh, Jesus, the second of which was a prayer addressing Christ as erotic Christ. Uh, the prayers themselves are taken from, again, I've got this stuff on my website, are taken from uh, an older set of prayers, uh, pretty much were repeated verbatim uh, in the cathedral. And yes, that's how they're now addressing Jesus, erotic Christ. Uh, I saw something about the Queering Trinity. The Queering Trinity, that's right. So Queering, of course, remember, is this more general phrase of challenging all our all our preconceptions, our foolish patriarchal preconceptions about structures. Queering seeks to deconstruct all of them. Uh, uh, and of course, the fact that God is Trinity uh, fundamentally undermines um, uh, all the binaries. And of course, the, the only binary they got in mind really is that we are male and female. Never mind that Jesus, the way in which we encounter the Trinity, because what does John say? No one's ever seen the Father. But the one who's at the Father's side, that's Jesus, makes him known. So the only way we actually encounter the Trinity is through Christ. the Son, empowered yeah. by the Spirit. He says, have you not read? Have you not read? In the beginning, he created them. Say it with me. Male and female. And then the third one, whatever that is. Because the second member of the Trinity is, is, is challenging our binaries. No, he's not. He yes. affirms them. Never mind. Well, and I mean, here in America, especially like New York State just passed a law where on the birth certificate has uh, male, female, or X. You fill in what you want. Is Maybe yeah. that's what they're talking about now over in your way. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, Kev, again, we need to say, don't we, there are, in a very rare number of cases, there are people who are born with more than two sex chromosomes, mm -hmm. uh, and they can be intersex, and sometimes, you wouldn't even know, sometimes it's actually very challenging for them, uh, uh, this is not about that. In fact, one of, the, one of the fascinating things about this whole debate is that within the whole LGBTIQ alphabet soup um, debate, there's actually a lot of um, friction in between the trans and the intersex because they're actually at cross purposes in in in, in what they're saying to each other to, to each well, other well there's so cross purposes much. because one wants pure definition and one yep. wants no definition and That's uh, right. it's wonderful to to watch a war between a uh, a lesbian leader and a trans leader um as they're trying to define and undefine uh everything that was created before them well, as one, as one um, a great apologist debater uh, that I follow uh, has, has often said, inconsistency is the sign of a failed argument. Yeah. So if you're inconsistent in your arguments, uh, then obviously your argument um, falls apart. Yeah, but uh, uh, my friend, there is more. Um, in Brisbane, we've also got a, a, um, a, a blessing of same-sex marriages uh, uh, motion up by the Dean, Peter Catt. Uh, and in Melbourne as well, one of the motions is a motion to call upon the government to ban any form of, of uh, gay reparation, uh, reparative therapy, or whatever it may be. And again, they're relying on 
you've had this in America as well. Yeah. The, uh, the National Psychological Society comes out and says on the basis of one study and one study only, uh, we want all this banned and the study itself. Uh, again, I've documented this on davidall.net. The study itself, uh, uh, Sid Lowe is, is, is the study. The study itself says you cannot draw any conclusions beyond the individuals in this study. And yet, uh, uh, all that kind of nonsense. So it's, 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 it's there. Um, it, it just it, it's on basically it's on and what's so fascinating about this Kevin is not the issue itself it's just it's it's just really interesting the bishops of the Anglican Church of Australia got together we've documented all of this for you uh, they got together in April early May they made their decision we are not going to move forward on this without doing it in the official way that is the general synod or perhaps even a question asked to the appellate tribunal which is like kind of our, our court of reference um, here and yet what's going on is that now there is this clearly concerted push amongst a number of dioceses and in some of them not in Melbourne of course but in some of them the archbishop or the bishop is basically just giving it giving it the wink and the nod uh, and so what will what remains to be seen is if these motions get passed I wouldn't expect it to be passed in, in Melbourne. I can't see it getting passed. But if it gets passed in Brisbane, Brisbane will be the one to watch. And then Perth, when their synod comes up as well. Will the Archbishop, uh, will the Metropolitan Archbishop in those areas give assent? If 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 he or she does, because it's she in, in Perth, if he or she does, uh, then we will have a serious issue. We have a serious crisis on our hands. Well, you, you currently do have a serious crisis because I don't see any accountability. Nobody's standing up beside yourself and a few other bloggers saying, ah, you can't do that. There was an agreement that we're not going to go there. Uh, where is yeah. the bishop saying, hey, you went there, uh, you're suspended? Well, yes. So I understand behind the scenes it has been made very clear mm -hmm. to, to people that if this progresses beyond just talking about it to anything that's actual, uh, that there will be serious consequences. Um, what, what, what will those consequences be? I know, I know it's your next question. Yes. Well, um, well, you said serious consequences. Having been yes. in tech for 20 years, I've never saw yes. a serious consequence. Other than, the the okay, well, other than tearing the fabric of the communion. We'll set up a panel of reference and then the commission. Right. Uh, no, you should expect uh, conservatives, uh, bishops here to take out Episcopal standard of complaints uh, and other disciplinary procedures against fellow bishops and other clergy if um, either things like this are legislated for and passed or um, they're allowed to pass by passively. Do you know what I mean? By, 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 by for example, by a diocesan sure. not, uh, mm -hmm. not vetoing uh, a motion or, or legislation. Uh, at, at, at synod we are we are close to i think to somebody calling their bluff on that and they may be very very surprised uh at what happens yeah all right so what's your guess for the future will you know five years from now uh there be an official uh i don't want to use i'll use the word um an official way to go to an anglican church and have not just a blessing but a marriage ceremony uh, between two same-sex couples I can't see it not happening. Okay. I can't see it not happening somewhere. Um, uh, you said right at the start that people acting unilaterally uh, has um, ha has happened in the past. It's happened here in Australia. So, for example, before we got around uh, quite a few decades ago to legislating for for, for women clergy, um, the Archbishop in Perth, for example, uh, ordained women, and, and it happened in other dioceses as well. So there is just this pushing on ahead um, if they can't get their own way. Uh, so I think uh, you can't imagine it's not going to happen. And actually, f you've got to remember, for for the revisionists, this is this is a matter of principle. Uh, um, misguided as they are, they genuinely believe this is a, a really really important issue of inclusion. I think they would say this is the gospel. This is the this is the gospel moment um, of the day. Uh, now you and I would disagree, and probably most of our viewers would disagree. But I think you've got to remember the conviction with which they hold sure. uh, their position. Uh, and therefore, uh, I think it's going to happen, and then uh, I think there'll be a significant fallout from it. I wonder if, if in five years' time, when you and I meet at the next Gathcon, wherever that will be, um, I wonder if there will be two um, two bodies in in Australia and New Zealand. I'm it's hoping for that. Atlanta, but it might be the shores of Australia. Well, yeah. do you know, you should all Sydney. Uh, Sydney is great. It would be a much uh, much smaller commute for me. Uh, to get there, uh, you would be welcome. In fact, maybe we could we could host Anglican TV in our, in our home. I don't know. I should talk to my wife before I make uh, sweeping off. No, that. before we hosted you, I didn't talk to my wife. I said, "Hey, we're just going to do this," and she's like, <laughs> "She's like, David, who? What's an old? Is he old? Are you saying he's old?" I said, "No, no, 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 no. David, old. Yeah. Peter's brother." 
Peter's old too? Oh man, you're just like, uh, it's not gonna work. So, so Kevin, um, look, we would love. I, I, I know I speak uh, for many here. Uh, we would love for this all to be sorted out properly. We'd love for, um, let me just say it quite frankly, we'd love for some bishops to repent of the things they've said in public, let alone senior clergymen. Um, I would love for people just to have integrity. I, I, do you know what it? What would it be if every senior clergy person, let me use all my language correctly, in Australia? actually kept their ordination and consecration vows, if they actually, uh, were in good conscience and with, with no feigning, simply upheld the constitution of the Anglican Church of Australia, upheld what the Bible said, upheld the doctrine of the Book of Common Prayer and the Articles, as they promised to do, if, if we could just do that, we'd be okay. So what we have at the moment is, as you had in tech for many years, is a shocking, let's just say it, a shocking lack of integrity. Mm -hmm. uh, people are taking the check every month and yet they're not doing what the check imposes, and they're doing it in the sight of God, uh, and in the face of many congregations. Uh, let me use my language uh, d deliberately. It, um, so it, it, there is a call to repentance that clearly must be made, um, and, and will be made, and you'll see it in a disciplinary process, I think, at some point. Uh, but it's going to push on. I don't think it can be avoided, Kevin. And so then the question will come, what will, what will come of it? Sadly, the same clergy vows have been said for centuries. They haven't changed. And yep. I, I don't think the people who, you know, stop keeping the vows understand this is what the unbelievers and the believers are watching. Do the people who profess this believe this? And if yes, you profess it and you don't believe it, they see through it in an instant. And they, look, quite frankly, they're, they're not impressed by us trying to be all inclusive and the rest of it. So I mentioned at the start of the show, the Brisbane Cathedral normally has 35 to 40 people at its even song. Uh, do you want to take hazard any guess to the crowds that flocked for the Pride even song? Just take a rough guess. I'm going 50 here. 35 to 40. Okay, all right, you know. They, marketing, you know, if they told more people about these things, you know, maybe yeah. they get 10 more. I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's the same here in America. Uh, the, a, a report just came out on uh, marriages in the Episcopal Church are down 15% in the last 15 years. It, it just, it's a wipeout. It's more than, I'm sorry, but it's a wipeout. People aren't flooding in. They aren't flooding in. This isn't like the, the, the forefront, the pioneering mission forefront yeah. uh, of uh, people are flocking to. Mm. Say it's not so, Kevin. I'm, it's hard. Now, let's tell people here, you want to have a real set. We want to record with you more often. Uh, <laughs> now, hopefully we can do a same time zone one day, but uh, behind you, you have these two glaring windows, and yeah. you have what I have, follicle resemblance issues, and so uh, yes. that, that light behind you shines forth more than you want it to. Uh, maybe okay. we get you a, black drop, uh, a backdrop back there. I, look, I will work on something. I am in. This is this is the best part of my room, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I'm not. Don't hear me complaining. I love my job and sure. I love where I am. But we're dealing with some old buildings, and this is the best part of my room. But um, I, 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 let me work on something for next time, Kevin. Then you should hold me to it. Hold I, me accountable. I'll hold you to it. But I, there, I yes. know there's some video people from Australia who watch. If they want to contact yes. you through your website, davidold.net. Yeah. Um, contact him. Let's get a nice green screen going, um, some lights, a good microphone, an earpiece. Uh, and, hey, uh, let's, um, let's green screen. And then maybe maybe viewers could give a suggestion of what the green screen background should be for, for our live Australian <laughs> Heresy trials. But I know, I know, I know what you're saying. It's like <laughs> lots of ideas going on there. What do you want in the background? <laughs> I have a, oh, I have a, I have a painting a, a guitar. So um, I also I need to get a microphone to Archbishop Venables. We're trying to uh, get him more on the program more often. One of the issues I have is I can't use Amazon to send anything to. Uh, um, he's in Argentina. Uh, nothing will send. Buenos Aires. Oh, sorry, Buenos Aires. Nothing will send. Uh, Amazon just refuses the address. Um, and so if anybody's flying there. Uh, to visit uh, Archbishop Venable soon, I want to send a microphone with you. Uh, contact me at anglytv at gmail.com. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm David Old. And you've been watching episode 440 of Anglican Unscripted Across the Time Zones. Thursday you were and Friday. Me to do that. I oh, did not. I, listen, you, this is why you're paid more than I am. I, you don't need to say that type of stuff. That's my job. You must be paid very little at all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, free coffee. <laughs>